celebrate the opening of our summer exhibition, One Planet Hours, Sustainability for the 22nd Century. We also are happy for the opportunity to bring here, in this great location, uh, viable examples of what we can all do to create a healthier planet. The garden is particularly indebted to Ray Mims, our conservation director. Well, we wanted to do an exhibit on sustainability and sort of what all that means. And one of the things I felt very strongly about, or we felt very strongly about, is having you know, some kind of sustainable, ecologically sensitive building or structure. Natural building just seemed like such a wonderful way to showcase ecological building. The, the exhibition begins Memorial Day and it closes uh, in October around Columbus Day. So it's really four and a half months. It's uh, a great opportunity, we think, to showcase straw bale construction, which is obviously our forte, but, and also natural building in general, which is the use of locally available materials in, the, in sort of a raw or natural state. With straw bales, you can pick them up locally. You're not bringing in um, timber or concrete and other high energy use, car big carbon footprint kinds of things from far away. Catherine Wannick with Phillips Without Borders joins me. Catherine? This is pretty much like any other conventional house, although we are trying to reinvent traditional building materials for the modern era. And building like this, a way to do something very environmental, very economical, very sustainable, and that's what Builders Without Borders is all about. Isn't straw kind of like a waste product? Basically? It is a waste product. In fact, the rice straw in California was burned before we right. started making homes out of it. I mean, what we really are hoping to have people see are sort of take-home messages and solutions of things that they can do, you know, if, whether they want to go you know, all the way to building a, you know, a natural building or sort of light green, of, you know, starting to recycle so they really can go away with understanding things they can do at home. This is nice. I like that. Probably an hour or so, we'll start taking the bales off of the pallets and putting them where they will be in the wall. Drum roll! That'll go up really surprisingly quickly. We'll build the bales up to their full height. Then a ring of wood is put on, which we usually refer to as the bond beam, and that helps tie everything together. This building is a load-bearing straw bale building. What's required there is to tie down the roof to the foundation so that the wind can't grab the overhangs and blow the roof off. We use polyester straps that are cinched down very firmly to connect the foundation, wooden frame in this case, to the bond beam, the top plate, and then to the roof. Then we'll put on the roof trusses, which are the wooden supports in this kind of triangular shape that will support the roof, and then the metal sheathing of the roof itself, the, the part that does shed the water and interacts with the rain and the snow, that gets put on. What's interesting about this building is that it's a load-bearing straw bale building. There's no wood posts or wood framing. It's just straw bale so that's supporting the roof, which means you're using a lot less wood and uh, you're not breaking up the skin of the straw bale so you get better insulation. In this climate, it's nice to have the roof up first so that if when you're building it, it rains, it doesn't get rained on. With straw bale, the critical thing is to keep the bales dry. Mm -hmm. Normally, we would do post and beam for a bigger structure in a rainy climate. We're going to take our chances with the weather and we're going to do a load bearing. This is so small and we can do it so quickly that we can get away with it. What do you think of the weather, Pat? Well, we need the rain because it's, it hasn't rained for about two months. It's just too bad that it's now. Jack, you want to grab that blue? All the rain that we had the last week hasn't happened like that around here for 60 years. It's almost 37% moisture content which is um, 
well above the point at which straw will start to mold. And we want to make sure that before we plaster anything, we've gotten rid of all those spots, either physically removed them or dried them out completely so that we don't have mold growth underneath the plaster. We are finding that when we put holes in the wall, um, all the way through, cut, cut it with a chainsaw, that we can get the center of the bale to dry out and that's been really effective. We'll patch those areas that we've excavated by putting some fresh flakes and a patch of um, metal lath and tack that back on to bring it to a true surface for plaster. With straw bale, plaster is an essential part of the process. It's not like plaster is added to the straw bale, but rather the plaster straw bale is the unit itself. It's an interactive composite unit where the stiffness of the plaster is an important part of making the whole thing more rigid and it also seals the, the straw bales inside so that there's no chance of fire or decreases insects. And that takes a long time. It takes a long time to apply the plaster, although you can mechanize it more, but we all love to do it artistically and by hand. And we'll have earthen plasters, clay-based plasters on the inside, and then lime-based plasters, the traditional plasters of the outside surface, which is more weatherproof uh, than earth-based plaster. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, so I'm not gonna repeat that, but very few people know about the fourth pig. And what happens was the fourth pig built his house out of straw and timber frame and natural plasters, and then the big bad wolf's breath actually ran the turbines that created the electricity for the fourth pig's house. the delays caused by the rain, it was challenging to build the Eco House in our three-week schedule. But we managed to finish just in time for the One Planet Hours exhibition opening on Memorial Day weekend. People seem to like our display of adobe, bamboo, and straw bale building. And the Eco House got a lot of visitors all summer long at the U.S. Botanic Garden. In June, the Environmental and Energy Study Institute organized a congressional briefing to showcase straw bale construction. Laura Bartels gave a presentation about how the insulation value of straw has the potential to create energy efficient buildings with a low carbon footprint. In September, the Botanic Garden hosted Builders Without Borders speakers for a week of sustainability presentations. When One Planet Hours closed in October, the Botanic Garden decided to keep the Eco House on display during the holiday season and it stayed in place through President Obama's inauguration. During that cold week in January, plein air artist David Farrell began a series of paintings of our exhibit. In March, to make room for the 2009 exhibition, the Botanic Garden helped us move the Eco House by hiring a huge crane. For a few seconds, the Builders Without Borders Straw Bell Eco House flew through the air onto a waiting trailer that took it to its new home in nearby Maryland. There's a website where you can see it today. I'm very proud to have assembled this really great team of builders. You have a lot more leverage if you're sitting behind, if you're behind the bale. 